customizing Excel 210. Modifying the basic Excel 210 options. In order to see the options that are available in Excel 210, if you click on the File tab and then click on the Options button down here, this will bring up the Options dialog box. So as you can see, there's uh, tabs down here. So you've got General, Formulas, Proofing, Save, Language, Advanced, Customized Ribbon, Quick Access Toolbar, got Add-ins, and you've got Trust Center. If you click on where it says General here, and you look at the sort of things you can change, you can change the general color scheme, you can decide whether the uh, mini uh, toolbar is displayed or not. Uh, down here you can uh, set things like the default font size, uh, the default font type. And this one here is quite often useful. Include this many sheets. When you create um, a new workbook using Excel 210, by default you get three worksheets containing the workbook. If you wanted to up that to maybe 12, so let's say you're working on a system where you had one tab for each month. So you wanted 12 uh, worksheets in the workbook. You would change this to 12 and uh, click on OK to save the options. Uh, down here you've got your username. So basically this can identify to Microsoft um, that you're either your personal name or the company name. If you go down here, there's various other things we can do. So if you click on formulas here, there's changes you can make as to how uh, calculations are, are calculated, what sort of styles you're going to use, uh, error checking and so forth. If you go to where it says proofing, again you've got various other options here so you, you can tell it for instance to uh, ignore words in uppercase, uh, ignore words that uh, contain numbers. These are bad ideas, quite often you find by default those are clicked, I always take them off so that when I'm doing proofing basically nothing gets ignored. In the same way, you don't really want to ignore uh, internet hyperlink addresses either. Uh, always get uh, the system to check everything each time you do a, um, a spell check or a grammar check. So as you can see, you've got various proofing options here. If you click on where it says um, autocorrect options and you look at those, these can be incredibly useful. I'll just move these over here for a minute. So for instance, you can set up the autocorrect option so you can decide whether or not you want to correct um, you know, two initial capitals in the letter. So if you don't want it, take that off. If you do, leave it on. Do you want it to automatically capitalize the first letter of a sentence? Do you want to capitalize uh, names of the days and so on and so forth? So basically you can set up the autocorrect options in here and you can also add new ones. Incidentally, if you look at these, this is quite a nice little tip. Let's say you want say the copyright symbol here it shows you if you type in open bracket c close brackets uh, that will be replaced by the copyright symbol if you type in open brackets e close brackets that will give you the euro symbol if you typed in open brackets r close brackets that will give you the register sign and so on and so forth so you might like to try those and if you scroll down here you'll find there's various other things so if you've got any uh, typos that you make that you're not already listed in here, then basically you can put your typo in there and put the correct spelling in here. So that's basically how you use autocorrect. If you look down here, we've got various other options. So for instance, if we click on the save option here, you can basically save uh, where your um, file is going to be saved to. So you've got the default file location here, which basically means that when you go file open, by default, this will be the directory it looks at. And when you go and click on the Save button, again, by default, this specifies the file location or the directory location it's going to be saved to. Again, if you look around, there's various other things you can do. For instance, you can set the auto save. In this case, it's 10 minutes. If you wanted it to be 15 minutes, you just up that or bring it down. And you can also save different formats or different default formats. So if you were using Office, uh, 210 in um, a situation where other people in the in the office are not using 210 but maybe an earlier version of Microsoft Office then you could possibly set the default uh, file format to an earlier version so if we set it to uh, Excel 210 sorry Excel 97-2003 that basically means that by default when you save files even though you're working in, in uh, Microsoft Office um, Excel 210 it would use the earlier file formats um, I won't actually set that. And as you can see, as you go down here, there's various, various other things. You can set things like the language, 
there's more advanced options you can set down here. Uh, just customizing how things work. You can uh, customize the ribbon there. You can add uh, bits and pieces. You can add extra elements. And as you go down here, as I say, it's worth just sort of seeing what you've got. Uh, there's various add-ins you've got there, and there's also the trust center which you can set from here. So those are your basic options there. Minimizing the ribbon. As you can see, when, you use, when you're using any of the 210 products, the, the ribbon can take up quite a bit of space. What you can do is, if you go over the ribbon and just right click, you've got this option here that says minimize the ribbon. And if you do that, then basically it minimizes. So basically, you can bring it back anytime you want. It basically just means you've got more sort of real estate, you've got more workspace. If you go over any of these tabs here and just right click, and then just click on minimize the ribbon, you bring it back. So minimize the ribbon in the first instances, it minimizes it, it goes away. Right click on any of the tabs, select minimize the ribbon again, and it brings it back. It's just a way of giving yourself extra space if you need it.